on your day to to be with us, learn with us, and get more insight into your own personal health and wellness journey within your body. Because that's really, you know, what we're here to do is learn some new tools and language and um, how we can start to speak and work with our body in a different way. Um, and I would say that's what I've been doing for 20 years within my own body with the method. Um, and it was so powerful in my own personal experience um, way back when, that when I was a personal trainer, that I just couldn't see any other way of communicating with it anymore and had to teach it from there on out because I once I read the books and I started doing the exercises and having my own experience, I, it just sort of blew my mind. Wow. I could help so many people. This information really needs to be out there. Um, and, um, it's a, it's a empowering tool that you can use for a lifetime and share with others. And it just really makes a difference. Um, so I'm so grateful to share it with you all today. So thanks for being here. Thanks, Chloe. Um, yeah, I kind of have a similar background, at least. I also started as a personal trainer. You know, I was always been interested in the human body and exercise. And, um, and so I was studying exercise science in college, uh, <clears throat> trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my career, you know, and looked into physical therapy and some other things. And um, around the same time, I had a professor who was familiar with Higoscu and he um, introduced it to me, um, and it sounded like a really great idea, right? We could correct posture with exercises. We could help people get out of pain. Um, and at the time, you know, I was in my early 20s and thought, oh, this will be great, something I can use for my personal training clients, um, but it doesn't apply to me, right? I'm This isn't for old people. I'm young. I'm invincible, right? <laughs> so... Well, I was humbled when uh, I started having my own shoulder and back pain when I was playing a lot of racquetball. Um, and so I thought, well, maybe I should give this Egoscu a shot. And sure enough, um, you know, I had the professor assess my posture and saw how crooked and out of balance I was. And then it made sense why I was hurting. Um, and so I was able to uh, address that through the exercises and started feeling better and was able to keep playing racquetball. So that was what really sold it for me. And um, so I went on to get certified and found a job in with Martin and Kelly um, in the Portland clinic there. So <laughs> that was 10 years ago now. Crazy. Um, Hard to believe. Yeah. So I started there and then I worked for a little while getting some experience. And then I moved up to Seattle about eight years ago and um, opened up my own practice here. So um, that's me. And it's something, again, like I, I continue to do it, um, even today as just something that I know it feels good. And it's my posture is always, there's always something to work on, you know, I'm not perfect, but it's been able to help me get out of pain and recover from injuries and hopefully will continue to, you know, keep me active and, uh, the rest of my life. So, and I'm just here to help other people achieve the same. So. That's it for me. Let me um, share my screen and then we will get on with the presentation. Okay. So uh, we're talking about knee pain, but just kind of some background in general of um, at Egoscu, we view pain a little differently than probably most of Western medicine does in that uh, we don't think pain is a bad thing. You know, it's it's simply a signal. Um, could mean that there's something bad happening, <laughs> but uh, it doesn't necessarily mean there's any damage or anything broken. Um, it's just your body's warning signal. Um, and just like the check engine light on your car tells you something's wrong, um, we have to then you know, diagnose and figure out, okay, well, what turned that signal on in the first place? What, uh, what does it mean? Um, we don't, the signal itself isn't the problem, right? We don't want to just cover up that check engine light or ignore it, right? We've got to obviously fix the problem. Um, and it's the same with our bodies. When we just try to cover up the symptoms or ignore them or, um, you know, ignore what caused that light or that 
pain signal to come on in the first place, that's when we run into trouble. So, um, yeah, a lot of people will blame their pain on their age. We get this a lot, especially with knees. Like, oh, I just, you know, got bad knees. I'm getting older. I've got arthritis. Or, you know, my dad had bad knees or my mom, my grandpa, whatever. You blame it on the genetics. Um, I always like to counter that statement with, um, well, your right knee is, hurts worse than your left. Or your right knee has more arthritis than your left, right? So how old is the left knee? <laughs> or it's the same genetics on both your knees, right? So why does one wearing out quicker than the other? Um, so there's usually a, there's a deeper cause, um, you know, which we believe to be ultimately your posture or your biomechanics, how you're moving. Um, and so that's what causes joints to wear out prematurely, ultimately, you know, barring some kind of accident or, um, uh, other health condition, but most of the stuff we deal with this wear and tear, um, is due to, um, poor posture. So it makes sense, you know, this concept's fairly simple, but unfortunately it's not very common in the medical world right now, but, um, just like this house, obviously it doesn't look very stable. It's actually a miracle. It's still standing, I think, but, you know, maybe you're, you, um, can relate to this when you look in the mirror. <laughs> Um, but just like um, just like a building or a structure has, you know, load bearing walls and a foundation, you know, that need to be straight and supporting the rest of the structure, our body's the same way. And if it, if those structures get moved around or, you know, we shift our weight to one side more than the other, uh, we're no longer stacking up vertically. You know, it's just a matter of time before something breaks or or gets uh, worn out or you know, like the check engine light, some of those early signals sometimes are just pain or stiffness or limited range of motion. Those are kind of the first signs before, you know, hopefully we catch it before stuff actually starts breaking down. But um, our bodies were made to move. And ultimately, the root of most people's problems is that, um, at least nowadays, we're just not moving enough. Or if we're moving a lot, we're not moving uh, the way we're designed to move or you know, with enough variety, we may specialize and we have a favorite sport or a favorite activity, or we go to the gym, but then we're not um, using all our joints through, you know, their designed range of motion. Um, or maybe we spend an hour being really active and then we spend 12 hours a day sitting on our butts, right? <laughs> so, um, so that our muscles just adapt to how we use them. So if we're very active and we're moving, think about when you were a kid, right? We didn't have very many pains and problems back then because we were constantly in motion. Um, and now it's, it's unfortunately not at all so easy to do that, but that's why we have the exercises. That's kind of like our um, supplement, if you will, to make up for that lack of good movement that we get in our daily lives. So, um, so getting rid of the pain, again, just coming back to the signal issue, we don't want to just, you know, take medications that um, numb the pain, uh, at least not long-term, right? I'm not saying those aren't useful. <laughs> Sometimes you definitely need them, but that doesn't really fix the problem, right? If we want a long-term solution, we ultimately have to fix, fix the root cause, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, surgeries sometimes are necessary as well. I'm not saying that's not the case, um, but there's so many people that go into surgeries unnecessarily um, or they have the surgery and then, you know, months or years down the road, they, they're back where they started and they have the same problem still, right? Because they didn't really fix the alignment or the, the postural problems that would cause the pain in the first place. And so, um, it's just going to keep wearing out again. Um, another option is we could just rest and relax and de-stress, which also great idea, but not, I guess a lot of you that are retired maybe can do more of that, but, um, you know, we also have responsibilities to do. And so, um, we can't just give up everything because it hurts and just sit around and rest. Cause again, our bodies need to move. Um, and lastly, this poor guy even sitting on the bench, <laughs> you know, that could have been me or many of you maybe relate to this. If you've had to give up a sport or, you know, running or 
hiking or even just getting up and down off the floor maybe is a challenge because of your knee pain or other pains. Um, and instead of just giving those things up, we want to help you understand how you can fix the problem so that you can continue playing and continue enjoying an active life and not just stop the things that hurt because eventually you're going to have stop everything and not have very much that you can do, right? All right, um, Kelly's going to talk to us about posture now and what that means and what we're looking for, and we'll go through some examples. So take it away, Kelly. Yay. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this photo here, either in the clinic um, during your appointments or in the Agoski books or in textbooks growing up. This is just kind of the textbook baseline for, you know, good posture, human body in an upright position, right? And um, have I ever met anyone who looks like this? No. Do you have to be perfect and look like this to heal and feel great and live your best life? No. It's also just something that we use as a tool to help us see the difference over time. Like, well, how has our body shifted over time, right? What kind of accidents, injuries, lifestyle habits, and uh, have been created into our body that has created imbalances in our body, muscular imbalances that move our bones. So remember, your muscles move your bones. Your brain tells your muscles what to do, and then your muscles move your bones. If you didn't have a brain and muscles, your bones wouldn't do anything. They wouldn't be able to hold an upright posture. And we're an amazing healing machine. We're the only biped on the planet. So um, we have a lot of gravity that we are, um, you know, overcoming um, all day long. And so um, in that process of overcoming gravity all day long, it's so, so important that our eight load bearing joints are in alignment with each other. And then they can all coordinate and function and communicate with each other at the most optimal level. So when your shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles are, you know, your shoulders are level, your pelvis is level, um, your knees are pointing straight ahead, your feet are hip width and parallel pointing straight ahead, and your arms hang at your sides so that you see the side of your, the front of your thumb and the side of your, your pointer finger, you know, it shows us that, hey, there's balance in the system, there's alignment, um, there's not any, a lot of real compensations going on here. Um, so if you're looking in the mirror, you want to start looking and comparing yourself to these photos and just using it as a blueprint to, to ask yourself, huh, I wonder, you know, how did I, how did I get like this? What's different? What am I seeing in my posture that's different than, than this textbook kind of blueprint photo? Um, and it's a little harder to see your side posture in, by yourself, standing in front of the mirror, looking straight on, great. Looking at yourself sideways to the mirror, you can catch a glimpse, but most of, the, most of the time people feel kind of their side posture. They feel like, oh, my S curve isn't the same anymore. I'm rounding, I'm hunching, my head's in front of my shoulders, you know, my knees are bent, my hips aren't un underneath me, they push forward, um, you know, so those are like, you know, feeling kind of kinesthetic um, indicators that, hey, my upright posture just isn't quite in alignment, like ear, shoulder, hip, knee, and ankle, elbow and wrist, like all in a straight line with each other. So we use these, these um, pictures as tools to really just kind of get insight into, well, how have we compensated over time? How did we get to be in the posture position that we're in? And then when we look at our posture photos and we compare to the blueprint, it gives us such clear insight into why are we having the pain in the areas that we're having? Um, light bulbs go off, questions get answered that people have been trying to answer and find um, solutions for for decades. Um, and it really puts you in the seat of empowerment because then you're like, okay, now I know why. And guess what? There's a plan going forward and, and there's things that we can do about it. So um, that's, that's really the takeaway when you're starting to look at the posture photos and look at yourself and start the process of healing. And then Zach, did you want to do this slide or did you want me to? Sorry, it's muted. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, sorry. Let's talk about, um, since this is a knee workshop, just how this relates to the knee. We're not okay. going to go into a ton of uh, anatomy or detail here, but the knee, knee joint is, it's 
amazing because it's somewhat complicated, but it's also very simple, right? It's simple in the fact that um, it really just functions as a hinge, right? You've got your upper leg, which is the femur there on the top. And below that, you have the tibia and fibula, which make up the bottom. Kneecap kind of helps in the middle with the joint, um, but it's really just designed to bend and straighten, right? Just like a, a hinge. Um, now that becomes a problem when we start changing the alignment of the knee, which um, really is affected by the hip, right? Because your femur goes all the way up into your hip joint. So really most of these knee problems are, you know, coming from the hip or, or they can come from below at your ankle and foot too. But um, think of the knee as like the hinge that connects your very mobile hip and your very mobile ankle. The knee in the middle should be stable, right? It's, it, it should be strong and just bends and straightens. It's not meant to twist and bend sideways or anything, right? That's when we start tearing ligaments. Um, it, has a, it has a very limited range of motion in the rotational plane. Um, yeah. And one thing I wanted to mention too, which will will be what we what we do when we do our exercises later in that, those posture alignment, um, the blueprint photos, um, you know, even though we're talking about the knee, you know, the upper body position and the way that you hold your shoulder girdle on top of your spine, on top of your pelvic girdle, riding on top of your knees is a really important component, you know? So if you're, if you kind of walk around all hunched over and even just try it out, if you're in your house, like walk around and feel what that feels like and feel the pressure into the knees and how even if you like lift one shoulder and lean forward or rotate your body, like what that feels like in the joint. And imagine if you're walking around with that degree of rotation or rounding or misalignment 24 seven, and you're working out and you're doing all those things, how over time your knees are going to look like this because they're compensating. They're stuck in the middle of it all just right. as a hinge trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. We're kind of just focused. We're looking at the knee, but there's also a whole body above this that's affecting it. So you can imagine, you know, these three examples, valgus is when the knees come together, you know, like knock kneed, varus is when they go apart, like bow legged. And then in the middle there, we have kind of a unique situation where you've got kind of both, right? Cause the whole, everything's kind of shifted to one side. So, um, but yeah, the upper body will definitely affect that. And just like that house, remember, you, if you were just looking at the bottom, it might be tilting one way, but then at the top, it's actually tipping the other way. So your upper body position will change how the lower body has to bear, bear your weight and support you. So the knee kind of gets stuck in the middle. Um, we can also have a problem where the direction the knees are pointed, like we talked about the knees should kneecap should point straight ahead, um, but you can see the knees can either turn out or externally, like uh, this guy. Sorry, that's a really low resolution photo, but hopefully you can see those kneecaps pointed out just kind of like his feet are, um, or they can point in. And this, this uh, person you can see, especially this knee is turned in more than the other. Um, and he's yeah, also- All varying degrees of instability. Yeah, so you think about that hinge, um, or um, again, sorry for the car analogies, but think about the tires on your car, you're driving straight down the road, or just like our bodies, we're walking straight um, forward. If your tires are pointed inward or pointed outward, or maybe one's pointed a different direction than the other, you're still going to get down the road, but it's going to wear that tire out quicker and you'll, um, you know, it's not going to last as long and it's going to cause a lot of extra friction, right? So same with our knees, right? If we're walking this way, but our knees are like this, now we're, we're you know, it's less efficient. We're <laughs> causing extra stress on that hinge, trying to open and close it at a crooked angle, right? So uh, tibial torsion is kind of a combination where we see the knees and feet not pointing the same direction. So meaning, um, like it's easy to see on this one, how the kneecaps, they look actually pretty straight, right? They're pointed straight at the camera, but then the feet are turned out quite a bit, right? So the knee and the ankle joint and the knee joint are no longer in sync. So they're, they're getting this torsion or this twisting. Um, this one is a little harder to see, but it's kind of the opposite where the feet are pointed straight, but then the knees, especially this one is turned inward, right? So again, 
we want those knees and ankles to line up with each other um, the best function. Yeah, that. the body is an amazing compensating machine. So, you know, your brain is saying, hey, we are going to do X, Y, and Z. We are going to climb that mountain and we're going to calculate the right muscles and the right, um, you know, um, synergy between all the bones and muscles and ligaments and tendons and everything right to get up that mountain. Even if it's compensating ones versus the deep core posture muscles that you should be using. And then over time, you know, it adds up after you've strengthened those compensations over time. This is how you get to being like this, right? In these positions. Um, and it's amazing that the body can do it. And over time, like like Zach said, wear and tear um, in, the, in the wrong posture position. And it also can be a deterrent for your healing. Like you've, if you've had injuries, you've fallen, right? You've had an injury and it's just not healing and you're like well why is my body not healing the body has to be in alignment it has to be in an environment where healing can thrive and so you know the straighter and more aligned you can get the quicker and better you can heal the system and the body as a whole so kind of keep that in mind if you if you i kind of saw in the chat there's quite a few people who have fallen have injuries haven't quite gotten all the way back um, you know, really take a look at your posture. Let's, let's see what your posture photos look like and, um, and what could be getting in the way of you healing. Cause I have a feeling if we look at your leg positions, we might see some similarities with these photos. Yeah. <clears throat> the last one is seen from the side view and that's just the bending or straightening. So flexion is, uh, when the knee is bent and extension is when it straightens, or in this case, it's hyperextension or, you know, more than normal. Um, again, just usually related to something else going on in the rest of the body and the knees are, are kind of compensating for that. Um, so those are kind of all the basic ways that knees can be out of alignment. <laughs> um, but we're going to now look at a, a real, you know, full body here. Um, and I want you guys participants to chime in and tell me what you see what looks off with this guy's posture, looking at all the joints, like what, what do we see that looks different from the ideal that we talked about a minute ago? So go ahead and put it in the chat or unmute yourself and just shout it, shout it out. But this is going to help you guys to start to look at your posture and start to become your own posture expert within your own body. Yeah. So I've got He's that. He's leaning, leaning to the left. Good. Yeah. So he's, we've got that red line there starting at the middle between his feet. So that's, he should be centered over that midpoint, right? But he's, he's not, he's tipping to his left. Good. Good eye, Amy, that left knee. Yeah. It has a lot of rotation in it. Mm -hmm. More than the right. They look different. His pant legs could have been a little higher, would have been a little more helpful for us to see his knee. Yeah. <laughs> Shoulders forward, hips forward, head forward. Yes, yeah, so that side view, again, the red line shows the starting point at the bottom, at the ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, ear, should all be on that line, remember? So he's pretty much forward on all of that. So yes, think about how, start thinking about, well, how might that affect his body? Like what might be hurting him? And um, I mean, his knees, right? Knees aren't in position with his weight forward like that. I think that changes how the stress is put on your knees, right? Uh, Does anybody have an idea of what side of his body he might have more weight on? Like instead of being 50-50 in his weight and his feet, which side might he have more weight on? Like if we put a scale underneath him on both feet and would it show which which side yes more on the left john you're a veteran amy you're already in the system so you guys you guys know yeah and think about what that does for the body you're hanging out 60 percent of your weight on the left side of your body and his left side of the body is quite out of alignment from the ankle to the knee to the hip to the shoulder so wow 60 percent of your weight on the left side that's out of alignment and what's that going to do for the body all day long and then hey let's take a workout to that let's add some pickleball let's you know go for a walk or a hike or a run 
let's sit in our chair all day, you know, and wow, what, what kind of things you're going to be coming out with? <clears throat> Amy asked, how do you tell the hips are forward? So good question. The, you can't really see the hip joint obviously. Um, but you usually eyeball it as like basically halfway between the front of his thigh and the back of his thigh. So it's kind of like where his wrist is, um, is probably like where the hip socket is. So that's forward of this red line. So that's, we say the hips are forward. Like that. Yeah, and when you take your posture photos in clinic too, um, with the therapist, um, we actually put these lines on the body and you can see it all um, for yourself. Now, it's harder to do at home on your own, um, but you can kind of take a ruler too with a pencil and you start at the ankle bone at that red dot and just draw the line straight up and your body will fall where gravity, um, you know, takes it. So. All right. So here he is after doing some Egoscue. Um, what do we see that looks different now? What changed specifically in his body? By the way, these photos are, we take pictures of people and, just at rest you know they're not you could fake it and try to stand up straight you know but we instruct people to just relax you know if you ever had your photos done you know how it works but um, this is just a relaxed natural stance for him now because of the work he's done but what changed more virus oh more virus i'm assuming it was a typo <laughs> um sips are more in alignment but the shoulders back still yeah, right. So um, it's not perfect, obviously, but that side view now, everything is much more lined up. Still, someone was pointing out, um, so see how his head was not even barely touching that red line, and now his ear is. So his whole spine, his whole body weight shifted back. So now his hip is a little more centered over that line, but you're right, shoulders are actually slightly behind the line, right? So he still has some kind of excessive curve in his upper back. So that was a good point, but still I would say this posture now is better than this posture, <laughs> all things considered, right? Uh, let's see, uh, much more balance. So the varus in his knees, yeah, I think it's just more obvious. I don't think they're more varus, it's just he spread his legs out now, right? Before he had this really narrow stance so now he's actually bearing his weight better, right? His ankles are under his hips and not, this is kind of like a very narrow, unstable stance to stand that close together, right? He's not 60-40 anymore, 80-20, he's 50-50. And yeah. so that's really important for the upright body to have your center of gravity right two inches below the belly button where it's designed to be. Uh, in the old photo, you know, his center of gravity was to the left, it was not centered. So that is very cumbersome for balance and stability, um, range of motion, all those things. So um, the knee position looks more balanced right versus left before they were very different. They look like they two, two different legs on two different people. Now you go, oh, these two legs are attached to the same person. And so there's more balance and stability in that versus one looking one way and one looking the other way. So we're always going for more symmetry, more balance with the exercises over time. That's what gives you the long lasting results is shoulders shifting, spine position shifting, hips shifting, knees shifting, ankle and foot position shifting, right? Versus like working on one part at a time and then leaving out all the other parts that make up an upright body, which is those eight load bearing joints. Right. So think of his left knee now. Remember how before, let's assume he was putting 60% of his weight on the left side um, and he was also forward. So, you know, now with this 50 50, that now we took off a good good amount of stress from that left side and the right side's actually doing its job <laughs> to help support his body and he's more upright. So you can see how the upper body now in a better position is going to help his knees, even, you know, even without doing anything, um, you know, directly for his knees, we, we really were just 
changing the entire body. So, all right. Okay. That was a matter of, I can look back at the dates, but it was, uh, I think, just a matter of a couple months. You know, he went through um, our, uh, at least the initial mm -hmm. eight sessions, um, these before and after photos. So, you know, everybody's progresses at a different rate, you know, so some people's posture changes really fast, other people's takes longer, kind of depends on where you start and, and what you do every day, right? But um, we'll show some other um, examples just to show um, some different bodies and how they change. So here we've got on the, the left, the lighter shorts, that was before and then after um, the dark shorts. This guy specifically had knee pain. Can anybody guess which side? 50 50 chance, but <clears throat> look, at, look at his knees and remember they should point straight ahead, right? Can we see which knee is turned out more? Which one looks more tortured? I'm looking at it going, that thing is being tortured. <laughs> yeah, so it was his right knee, this side, our left, his right. Um, you can see his right foot was also more turned out. So that whole that whole side was more twisted outward. Um, and then, you know, after both knees much straighter, um, the side view, this is also interesting. So again, he was kind of like that last guy, maybe not as severe, but he was definitely forward and his shoulder is also more forward. One way you can see that is look at the space behind his arm here. Um, how much of his back is visible versus afterwards it was much less back because that shoulder, shoulder blade got move back into a healthier position. Um, I think photos are a great way to learn. Um, you know, you don't know what you don't know, right? Like once you look at the photos, I mean, most people, I've, I really have never had an experience where someone sits in the chair and they say, oh yeah, that's completely what I expected it to look like. And I'm not shocked at all at what I'm seeing. Um, most people are like, wow. I had no idea how my posture was related to my pain and my physical limitations. And it's, it's really such a, an amazing first step and awareness of like, oh, this is where I'm at. This is how I wound up being how, I'm, how I, I am and created the pain that I'm in and the limitations I'm experiencing. And so you know, that's a, a huge first step. So you got to pat yourself on your back if you've already come in and you've already gotten photos and you already know a lot of answers to the questions that you have. And if you haven't, hey, like get the courage, get brave, give us a call, like, you know, get your photos taken, look at yourself, take the photos, like start uncovering like your knowledge about about your situation because it's it's priceless. It is it's very educational. Um, Amy asked, what is the right what is the hand being forward mean? So stand with your shoulders like extra slumped, like just kind of push your shoulders forward and look at where your hands end up, kind of in front of your body, right? Now pull your shoulders back, squeeze between your shoulder blades, and then see how that affects your hands. So we want our hands resting at our sides. And again, if you look in a mirror, you should only see the, you know, the thumb and first finger. Right? You don't want to see the backs of your hands because that means your arms are twisted in. So the hands should be at the side, um, not in front of your body or, or turned inward, inward. So that's what that means. Shoulder, it just, it's just a way of judging the shoulders, looking where the hands are, basically. Uh, this lady has uh, quite an amazing um, improvement here, um, but it just goes to show how even extreme cases like this where she couldn't even stand up all the way um, before her session. Um, now she was able to get a lot more straight and it also shows how our bodies adapt to what we do. This lady was a client of our, um, one of our Japanese clinics. Um, they sent this photo in and she, uh, I guess the story was she was, you know, worked in rice fields and all day. So the body just adapted to that constant bent over position and um, so, but again, it's never too late to, uh, to make a change here. Um, and just think about how all the systems of her body, not just our joints, her knees, her back, her neck, 
is under strain, but think about her organs, right? <laughs> that how compressed they, they must be uh, when you're bent forward that much. So it'd be really hard to climb a hill in that position. You would be so out of breath. Yeah. Um, okay. So enough uh, talk. Now we're going to do some exercises, but first we want to do a little self-assessment I'll teach you. So if you can't take your own photos, the next best thing is just getting a sense of your alignment. So if you want to stand up and participate um, and take off any shoes if you're wearing, socks are fine, but preferably uh, no shoes. And just kind of march in place a few times, shake out your legs and your arms, and then um, and then just stand still, relax. Don't look down at your feet. Just put them wherever you feel is natural for you. I know we were just talking about posture, so you're probably hyper aware, but um, stop sharing my screen here um, so we can see. So <clears throat> just standing still. Feel free to turn on your videos too if you want us to be able to see your posture and kind of give you feedback on your exercises as you do them. Don't be shy, it's just us. <laughs> So, okay, so you're standing there, you're standing still. Now just check in with the bottoms of your feet, okay? Just what do you feel down there? Does it feel, first of all, does your right and left side feel the same or do they feel different? Um, do you feel like your weight is more on the front half of your foot or back on the heels? Maybe it's one way on one foot and the other way on another foot. Um, maybe you feel like it's moving around and it's not very stable. Um, all sorts of different options here, but uh let's uh can some people share what they're feeling at the moment what do you feel in your feet right now uh, or on the right heel on the left no backwards mm -hmm. or on the, the ball of foot on the left side and the heel on the right side okay so we got some differences right to left so that's um not uncommon so Gil also says more weight on the right. Okay, good. Anybody feel um, more on the balls of their feet? Back on the heels. No right or wrong here, by the way. We're just looking for clues. But you want to make a mental note of that because um, this is a just a basic uh, sign of how balanced your body is. So if, if everything was stacked up properly, you would have 50-50 on each foot, right? Um, and then it should be pretty equal. So basically 50-50 front to back as well. So the ball of your foot, kind of the pad of the foot and the heel, those that should be where most of the weight is. Um, you don't wanna to be too far, you know, significantly out on the outside edge or too much on the inside edge. It should be pretty evenly spread side to side. Um, so anything that's different than that just tells you, okay, the position I'm standing in at the moment um, is shifting my weight to a different spot, you know, um, and that's all completely related to your posture. So we're going to try some exercises and then we'll check it again after we do it so you can feel how quickly your body will, will change and you can actually be standing a bit straighter after a few simple things. So um so Kelly's going to take us through a few exercises, and just as a caveat, these are, um, you know, it's not medical advice or anything, so <laughs> uh, do at your own risk, but they're, they're generally safe and simple exercises, but we're, we tried to pick some that are going to affect your body um, quickly um, and uh, effectively, but they're not specific to any one individual, right? So we all, as you saw, have different postures. We saw in the photos, everybody, there's all kinds of different stuff that can go on with knees. So these aren't like knee pain exercises. These are just exercises to improve your general posture. Obviously you would have to have an assessment to figure out what your posture was like to get a more customized routine of exercises. But this is something that we can all kind of do quickly and just as a sample. So. And if something hurts, by the way, stop and let us know and we can give you some some modifications. So don't push through it if it hurts too. Yeah, listening to your body is the, the first lesson in Agostio. All right, so let's all stand and make sure, or you can do these sitting as well. So if the knee is just too painful right now and standing is not an option, it's okay to sit and do these exercises. I'll actually show you 
a quick sitting posture as well for that. Um, but if you're all standing, let me make sure I have the right angle here so you can see my total body from head to toe. Okay, and we're going to make sure that our feet are hip width apart. So if you have a yoga block, or if you don't, it's just two double fists tight. That's the width, that's hip width from heel to toe. And that's important because that puts you on the straight line and that aligns you from the ankle through the knee to the hip, spine and shoulder position, okay? The first exercise we're gonna do is elbow curls. So you're gonna do what's called a golf grip. You're gonna bend at the second knuckle and keep your palm open and thumb out. And you're gonna keep your wrists really straight. You're not gonna allow any bending or flexing of the wrists during either one of these first two exercises. So I'm a big fan of tools. I don't like to think about it. So I am gonna go back just to here. So you can see my total body there. I'm gonna go. And I like to make the knuckles be like a little rocking chair. So the second knuckle is going to be on your temples and you're going to rock from your second knuckle to your first knuckle and then back to the second, back to the first. So your palms are going to face each other and then face away from you. Face each other away. And you're keeping those wrists nice and straight. There's none of this bending and flexing of the wrists, right? And if you want to do an extra level, Inhale, rise up your belly full of air, exhale. <clears throat> Inhale, exhale. Elbows should be shoulder height, not below, not above, just shoulder height, okay? If you're gonna do these sitting, you're gonna be at a 90 degree angle with the knees and the hips, and you're gonna be keeping those shoulders above your hips. Same thing, open and close. Okay, and let's just do a couple more here. Yeah, the knuckles should be on the side of your, like your temples behind your eyes, not up on the forehead. So yep. kind of the side of your face, basically. Mm -hmm. From the side view, if I get closer, it's like this. When I'm really far away, it's hard to see the fine detail. Okay, so now let's put your arms down at your sides and let's lock your elbows and you're gonna take, before you even lift your, your arms, you're gonna imagine you have a little rubber ball between your shoulder blades. And you're gonna pinch that rubber ball between your shoulder blades, take your shoulder blades together and slightly down to hold that rubber ball in place, okay? Because we're not gonna drop it. And then you're gonna raise your arms, shoulder height also in that golf grip position, holding on to your little um, rubber ball between your shoulder blades. And you're gonna rotate your arms Thumbs forward, circle forward. So if I'm coming from this way, you're going here, right? Lock the elbows, drop the shoulders out of the ears, and then circle your arms. And you want to go fast enough that your body rocks, okay? Because guess what? When you rock the body like this, it resets your center of gravity right back to below your belly button where it should be, okay? Just try to stay relaxed up here in the head, neck, and upper shoulders, and really get those shoulder blades moving and gliding behind you, okay? Now the second one, take a break, kind of shake out your arms a little bit, double check your feet, make sure that they're still hip width, parallel, straight, six inches apart, right? We don't want to lose sight of that. Now we're going to palms to the ceiling, thumbs backwards, and we're gonna circle backwards. Half of the circle should be in front of your body, half should be in back. If you're really rounded, you might tend to be here. Try to pull them back, get half in front, half in back. Again, lock the elbows, keep the shoulders out of the ears, and really go fast enough that you rock the body, okay? We're gonna rock our bodies right into alignment. Mm -hmm. Sounds like fun to me. Okay, take a little break, shake it off, right? Some of you might be feeling like, ooh, I'm warm, I'm tired. I, ooh, that really woke up some muscles I haven't been using in a while. Well, those deep core, big posture muscles that fuel your metabolism and hold your deep core posture in place, 
those are really out of um, conditioning for most of us because we just don't use them during the day. So, you know, this is a great way to wake them up. If you have to sit for long periods of time doing these three exercises we're giving you, maybe one to three times a day, kind of throughout your day to break up that cycle of sitting is a great opportunity to gain more alignment, okay? So the last one, we're going to check our feet again, interlace your fingers. Now, if you can't interlace your fingers, it's okay. You can kind of just put one on top of the other. But if you can interlace, turn them right side out, lock your elbows, okay? And you're gonna keep your body in a nice straight line. You're gonna bring your hands up over your head, keeping your elbows locked, but your shoulders out of your ears. So it's kind of an oxymoron. Like, how am I gonna keep my elbows locked without my shoulders coming up? Well, herein lies the process, right? We're being conscious about our posture and our habit, locking the elbows, dropping the shoulders, looking up towards those hands, keeping our body in alignment. We don't wanna like push and we don't wanna lean. We wanna stay right at the middle of your feet, okay? And you're gonna hold it and you're gonna breathe through your belly. Big deep breaths. Yeah, make sure you don't lean backwards, right? We're not bending the back, we're just raising no. the Put that pressure onto your spine, okay? That could be an indicator that this one's a little bit too demanding for the level of alignment that you're exhibiting currently, okay? And let's bring the arms down, and then we're gonna do a check-in. So I like to just kind of, okay, like walk it out a little bit, you know, march in place, and then let's check in with our body. First of all, how's your pain in your knee? Is it the same, better, different, worse? Make a little note. How's the weight distribution in your feet? Are you still 60, 40, 80, 20? Uh, are, your, are you still on your toes? Are you still in your heels? Are you still inside edge versus outside edge? Take a look at your posture. Do you notice anything that's changed? Did your hands go from here to here? You know, do you feel, how do you feel? Do you feel less slumped over? Do you feel like you could breathe better? Who felt uh, something different in their feet now compared to five minutes, 10 minutes ago? Yeah, you can raise your little hand on the um, reactions. You can put your thumb up and say, hey, I had some had some feedback from my body. It was positive. It looks like John's more balanced, heel ball and side to side. Anybody else have any feedback of any kind? Thumbs up, Amy. Great. Well, and how much energy do you have? Do you feel like, man, you were kind of tired and asleep and you were just like, whew, how much longer is this webinar going to go? And now you're like, hey, I have more energy, more oxygen. I'm more engaged. I'm more awake. I have more energy. Yeah. Amy uh, also says evenly spaced. Great. Mm -hmm. Woke up, but left glute is complete. Interesting. So I wonder if, uh, was it hard, Gil, was it hard for you to stand with your feet pointed straight ahead? Do you think that, was that challenging? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even just trying to stand with your feet straight if your knees are crooked can cause pain. So I hope that's a good segue. Make sure that even though we told you to do your exercises with your feet straight, that's during your exercises. Throughout your day, you don't want to be trying to walk with your feet straight because if your knees are still crooked then and your feet are straight, you could actually cause pain. When you do your exercises and you get better in alignment, it will actually change your knees and your feet for you. So um, the exercises train you to be able to be in your daily life in better posture and not have to think about it. So because uh, remember, posture is subconscious, not, but today, like today's, if you haven't ever done a Goski before, today is your first time bringing posture conscious into the conscious mind, learning from it, and then creating a plan of exercises to, um, you know, correct it and move forward, um, getting more aligned and better function. Yeah. All right. So... 
those are just, again, some simple exercises you can do anytime, pretty much anywhere, you know, um, great way to break up the monotony of sitting, or even if you've been standing a long time, um, you know, good way to instantly bring some more balance to your body. So okay. thanks for the feedback, everybody. Thanks for playing along with us. Yeah. Yeah, Feel we'll free to share these exercises with people in your life too. You know, after today, you're never going to look at your body the same or anyone else's. You're going to be able to look at them and go, they've got to be in pain. And I think I might know where, mm -hmm. you know, so um, share the knowledge, share the wisdom. You've now been, um, you know, given the gift of you don't know what you don't know. Now you know. Right. So then what's the next step? So we'll, uh, We'll be done here in just a minute, but we want to leave you guys with some options of what to do next now that you've learned some things, hopefully. Um, so good first place to start if you're maybe you're still skeptical or you just want more information. Uh, Pain-free is one of Keith Egoscue's books. He wrote several, but Pain-free is the most popular and it's probably the best if you're new to this, um, or even if you're not new to it. I mean, a lot of veterans here that have been doing Egoscue a while can attest probably to how good the book is. Um, it talks about more in depth about how the method works and why, and um, there's also a chapter dedicated to each body part. So you can go to the knee chapter or the back chapter or the hip chapter, or whatever relates to you, and learn more about why you might have pain there and try some example exercises. Um, by yourself so that's uh you can get the book on amazon or on our website for you know 15 bucks usually um or for free from your library so um now if you'd like more guidance uh, maybe you found the what we talked about helpful it makes sense but you're not sure how it might help your situation maybe you are a complicated case <laughs> or or you just have some more questions and you'd like some one-on-one -on -one help, um, we're happy to offer a free evaluation. So meaning we'll take your posture photos, or if you're doing it on Zoom, by the way, if you don't live close, you can take your own pictures. We'll help tell you how. You can email them to us so we can add the lines and, and then kind of review it with you on Zoom um, and then talk about you know what, what we see, how it's related to your your pain. Um, so that's usually like a 20 to 30 minute um, consultation. Won't cost you anything, but we can talk about what you want to do after that. Um, and then the final option, of course, if, if you're ready to really get going and you want to see a change and you want to start getting some exercises to do or to change your body and start feeling better, um, we'd be happy to partner with you and um, help you along that path. So um, if you schedule in the next week, we are offering 10% off our therapy uh, programs. So these are the packages that we offer, the normal price crossed out, and then that's the 10% discount you see there And if you, if you want to sign up in the next week. Um, but just, you know, we, we have the two different packages because, first of all, it's, it's cheaper than paying for one session at a time if you bundle and commit to the process. And also, um, you know, most of us have had pain <laughs> more than just uh, a few days, right? These are typically chronic, like year long, years or sometimes decade long problems. Um, and so it's going to take take a little while to to change it. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time, though, as you saw with those posture photo examples. The changes will happen quick um, if we're, you're doing your exercises and then following up with us to make sure that doing things correctly. And we can start to, um, you know, adjust the exercises as needed and to help you progress, you know, to the next step. So as your pain starts to go down, you're going to you get more functional. You'll be able to do more things, right? Um, eventually, you want to start to strengthen your new straighter alignment and then, um, you know, build up your endurance so that you can do all those activities that maybe you've given up. So, so that's kind of what we work on over those 8 to 16 sessions. Um, they're typically an hour long, it's one-on-one, -on -one, um, and we meet usually weekly at first and then kind of just base it out. Once you start to feel better, we don't meet as often. And ultimately the goal is to just teach you all the things you need to know so you can maintain on your own. Um, so 
Oops. Any questions about any of that or anything you wanted to add, Kelly? Um, I don't know. I'm just grateful to have everybody here today and all the interaction and feedback. Thank you so much for being such good participants and trying on these exercises. And it took me a minute, but I recognized a couple of people that have been clients of mine in the past, John and Kitsy, like oh, hugs, 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 lots of love to you. It's so wonderful to see you here after all these years. Like you haven't forgot, you're still in the process. You're still like healing and making progress and getting results and on your journey which you know it this is a lifelong journey um we have a body for a long time and this is just a huge piece of the puzzle in you know getting um getting in tune with it and becoming more masterful in in it in movement and the things that we do to to heal ourselves and keep ourselves functional so thanks thanks for being here it's like uh, John Holman, you got a yeah, question? Yeah, John Holman and then Kitsy. Yep, they were both clients of mine uh, many years ago. And I love it. I love it. I love coming on here and getting yeah, to I, see people. I, uh, Kelly, I have a question. Sure. Uh, how does arthritis fit into this uh, puzzle? Uh, if you're in good alignment, uh, would you still have arthritis or is the out of alignment uh, sometimes cause arthritis to occur in your body, which is an inflammation. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Doesn't matter. But, you know, if you've had an accident or an injury or you're out of alignment, those areas are going to get more wear and tear, more rub and grind. You know, that like that picture of that guy's the left knee versus the right knee. That left knee is going to have a lot more wear and tear. Um, it's going to be in a position that's going to be highly susceptible to meniscus tears, ACL, you know, tears. Like if you put them on the ski slope and sent him down the hill, you know, that if he's going to hurt anything, it's probably going to be the left knee. Um, and then, you know, from there, it's like the arthritis sets in, you know, with the extra wear and tear due to the position. So, um, you know, arthritis, people generally are walking around at, at, at a certain age with a certain level of it, but it, some people are in pain and some people aren't because their level of alignment is different and their level of functionality is different. So, you know, we're just always looking for, Hey, how can we get more balanced? How can we get more optimal? How can we get more functional? How can we push past more limitations every day? Let's not get more limited. Let's learn more about our personal story, our personal, um, you know, situation. And then let's just break down those barriers and get past those limitations using the exercises as tools to really learn about our body and feel where we're out of a balance and, um, you know, make a difference and get progress and see results. Like I always say, the, the proof is in the pudding. You know, you test out your posture, you see your weight, where your weight distribution is, you look at your posture photos, you do your exercises, and then you put them to the test. Do I feel better different? Can I move better different? Like how, how is that translated into my real life? And if, if, if they're making a difference in your real life and the way that you're moving, hey, you're on the right track. If they're not, we need to go back to the drawing board. Or maybe there's other layers of the onion that we have to peel, of compensation that we have to peel before we're actually going to, you know, see some big results. Because sometimes, you know, we've been in these postures for so long that, you know, chronic situations, they can take a, a while. It didn't take us overnight to get the postures we're in. So sometimes it takes a little bit to peel that back and to get gain some function again. <clears throat> yeah, but arthritis can definitely, well, like Kelly said, you can have arthritis and not have pain, right? They're not inseparable. So even if you have a lot of arthritis, maybe you've been told you need a knee replacement or a hip replacement or something, um, it's possible that by changing your, by moving better, by changing your alignment, that your pain will, will drastically reduce. And, you know, the arthritis may or may not still be there, but doesn't really matter if it doesn't hurt right <laughs> so <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah i had a uh, this is john again i had a real serious sciatic nerve issue back in 2017 when i came back from denmark i was doing a lot of digging with a shovel and and ended up with a really serious pain problem 24 7 so i went to the chiropractor uh, came back to oregon went to the chiropractor for several sessions and it took care of just a little 
little bit of it, but I was still in pain. And then I uh, found out about your program. I did your sessions and uh, totally, totally got rid of it. I did the exercises for, I don't know, two, two, three years after that. Just kept doing it, even though the pain was gone. Uh, <clears throat> it totally took care of it. It was no question. It, it, that, that's what did it uh, by getting back into some uh, normal uh, posture uh, at that time. And, uh, but, uh, my knee, my left knee is bothering me a little bit. I'm not in any serious pain or anything, but when I play pickleball, I notice something, some little discomfort afterwards. So I think something is still out of alignment or went back out of alignment since those sessions that I did back in 2017. So, uh, yeah. I might have to come see you guys again. Absolutely. We're here. Change is constant in the body. And when you add new stimulus or go back to old stimulus, you know, um, the body, the check engine light will come on. And it's it's a great way you know, to be preventative. Get ahead of it. Like I said, John, don't let it get ahead of you because um, it's your opportunity to learn, hey, what do I need to do to in order to play this pickball for two to three hours? That's a long time. Um, so you might need a good warm up, Agoscu warm up, and then an Agoscu cool down, you know, of alignment to support um, that pickleball and mm -hmm. make sure you're tip top mm -hmm. to yeah. receive that level of demand. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Uh, so many other yeah, everybody. Oh, Marilyn? Okay, one question, yes. So I did the Agoscu program quite a few years ago, four or five, I'm not sure. Anyway, it got better. Then I had a more recent injury and x-rays. Anyway, it's bone on bone. I got hyaluronic acid, three injections, and I'm doing physical therapy. Um, so can I, do you think I'm trying to put off surgery? Do you think possibly I won't even need surgery? It's it's good now, except when I overwork it and then it hurts a little, but I do my ex. I'm still doing the PT and I have just bathing it and taking hyaluronic acid supplements. And anyway, is it inevitable that I will need surgery? Is what I'm wondering. Everybody's condition is specific to them, and you're the only one that can make that decision about yeah. surgery. Um, and remember, whether you have surgery or not, you still have to do the work. You still have to get an optimal alignment to support the area that's being compromised or stressed. So um, if ultimately you decide to have surgery, hey, let's make sure you're going into surgery with as many of those eight load bearing joints and positions supporting that one knee that needs all the help that way if and when you decide to have surgery, uh, you're gonna recover a whole heck of a lot faster and have way less compensations coming out of the surgery and that you didn't just go into surgery like trading one circumstance in for another. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's hard to say if he'll be able to prevent that or not, but like Kelly said, but um, if yeah, you're- I saw the x-ray, it's definitely bone on bone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, I've worked with enough, a lot of people who've who've had the same experience and at least put off surgery for a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. some have never had the surgery, but some have, you know, so it just kind of depends on how functional you are, what you can do and what you want to be able to do. Sometimes the surgery is definitely helpful. Um, and so like Kelly said, the important thing is because you're going to come out of the surgery with the same posture, if not worse when you're, when you're done. Right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I Either way, you want to fix that. And best case scenario, you never have to have the surgery. Mm -hmm. Scenario, you get a new knee and you have a better posture and you're going to feel a whole lot better. So it's a win-win, really. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And don't be scared of surgery, you know? Like, it's, it's your choice. Yeah, I saw so, the video. It's scary. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, but you know, take the, take the fear out of the equation mm -hmm. and just really listen to your body. I love what you said earlier about, well, if I push it too hard, then, you know, it starts to hurt and then I yeah. back off. Yeah. Listen, you got, listen, that, that is, that is the key is just listening to your body, meeting it where it's at. Um, if the tools that you're using now aren't quite getting you where you want to go, then, hey, there's room for learning more and getting more 
you know, information to and exercises on board with us to to get you going in the right direction. And anybody that I have had who ultimately made the decision to have surgery, man, they were covered with flying colors and their doctors could not be more, you know, happy for them, asking them, what did you do? How would how did you do this? Why are you so functional? Why did you do so good? So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish you the best of luck and please contact us if you have any questions or you need anything. Really, okay. we're here to support you and you're not alone. This isn't the first rodeo we've gotten with, you know, <laughs> yeah, this we have 20 plus years experience between the two of us, thousands of people that we've worked with. So um, I'm confident that, you know, we can teach you some things that, you know, could help you. Thank you. Thanks for being with us today. Right. Thanks for all the guys. We'll uh we'll be sending out the recording shortly. Bye, Zach. Yeah.